The revenge of patricide, Tong Yao was thrown into a hotel as a cleaner by Bo Mayan, and everyone could be bullied. After three years of redemption, Tong Yao transformed and quickly obtained evidence with her enemy. The most powerful figure in Hong Kong, Bo Mayan, made a high dot profile official announcement, and everyone speculated on who Mrs. Bo was. A month later, in the corner of the company, Bo Mayan pinched Tong Yao's chin and said, You're by my side it's just more convenient for me to torture you. But this scene was captured by others, and the company's employee group quickly exploded. Mr. Bo surprisingly behaved intimately with a small employee. So Tong Yao started a paid work life and created a new life after work. At the same time, she is still secretly investigating the truth on the day the truth was revealed, all her love for him was destroyed, and she ran away regardless of anything. Bo Mayan knelt in front of her and said, Tong Yao, I will use my whole life to make up for you. Tong Yao smiled and said, Dog man, stay away. Keywords of the novel Crime of flash marriage wife Mr. Bo, wife runs without pop-ups with her child, crime of flash marriage wife. Mr. Bo, wife runs with her child, complete collection download of TXT, crime of flash marriage wife. Mr. Bo, wife runs with her child, latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. Be my wife. Seeking collection. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 Be my wife. Seeking collection. Hong Kong City. Inside the Hyatt Hotel. In the filthy hotel restroom, Tong Yao, dressed in cleaning clothes, was carefully brushing the floor of the restroom. The ground was dirty and filthy, and I don't know who had just vomited it here. The smell constantly stimulated her nose, and her face was calm, as if she had only brushed an ordinary floor. She has long been used to it. Apart from being a bit dirty and tired, the manager always makes things difficult for her. Everything else is pretty good, and she is content to live on. Three years ago, she was thrown here by Bo Mayan and told the security of the entire hotel that she was not allowed to take half a step out of the hotel. Since then, she has been ignored. The manager also arranged for her to sleep in the hotel kitchen. She has to wait for the last person in the kitchen to finish work every day before she can go in and rest, and has to get up and tidy up before the first person to come to work arrives. The Bo family in Hong Kong has immense power and strong financial resources. As the heir of the Bo family, Bo Mayan is the most powerful emperor in Hong Kong, with one hand covering the sky and unpredictable circumstances. She still remembers that Bo Mayan roughly pinched the back of her neck and dragged her to the front, his black eyes flickering with an eerie cold light. Tong Yao, you can never have a better life. The Revenge of Patricide I want you Tong family to be buried together. Bo Mayan hopes that Tong Yao is not doing well. Three years ago, the Bo family was embroiled in a lawsuit, and Bo's father was deeply in crisis. As the chief lawyer of the Bo family, Tong's father suddenly overturned a case that was already in his hands, and Bo's father was sentenced to life. Within two days, Bo's father committed suicide in prison. This case caused a sensation throughout the country at that time. As a well-known lawyer at the time, Tong Fu was able to encounter such a big problem and was eventually reported by a coveted opponent, causing him to lose his job. Seeing Tong's father feeling depressed every day, Tong's mother felt heartbroken and suggested going on a trip to relax. However, she did not expect to encounter a car accident on the way back. The father of Tong was saved in time, but his leg was burned with a disease. The mother of Tong was seriously injured and still relies on mechanical equipment to recuperate in the hospital, which is costly. After investigation by the police, it was determined that the traffic accident was caused by fatigue driving, and the Tong family fell to the altar overnight. Human nature is thin and cold. The people who used to follow the trend are now all watching the play, and no one has stepped up to help her. Later, Bo Mayan left her in the hotel and asked her to do the hardest and most tiring work. Just this is not enough for him, he speaks up, Tong Yao has plenty of energy, 
and from today on, anyone in this hotel can command her to do things. Bo Mayan gave a cold smile and his gaze swept over Tong Yao, who had fallen on the side with a pale face, as he strode away from her. From then on, Tong Yao seemed to be deeply trapped in hell. A sound of footsteps outside the door, from far to near, pulled Tong Yao back from memories to reality, and she couldn't help but look up. Tong Yao, you don't need to brush the floor for now. Go to room 6001, someone is looking for you. The hotel manager angrily pointed at the door pushed by the envoy and couldn't help but cover his nose after smelling the smell. He looked around with a slight disdain. What's this smell? Go and go back quickly. This place hasn't been cleaned yet. Tong Yao was stunned for a moment and said, Find me. In the past three years, no one has ever come to look for her, and who could this sudden person be? The manager's face flashed with a hint of unease, with so much talk, of course we go to work. Tong Yao put down her cleaning tools with suspicion and headed to the suite. Just thinking about it, she has been almost a transparent person for the past three years, and people only think of her when they don't want to work. It's probably someone who doesn't want to work and asked her to do it. I don't know if the other party will make things difficult for her this time. In the corridor, the lights were dim and exceptionally quiet. Tong Yao took a deep breath without leaving a trace and gently knocked on the door. The door was ajar, and after just a knock, the sweet door opened a crack, which surprised Tong Yao. Is anyone there? Tong Yao pushed open the sweet door and took two steps inside. There were no main lights turned on around, only the spotlights by the wall illuminated a hazy area inside the room. She couldn't help but frown slightly, muttering that it was not good, and instinctively wanted to turn around and leave. At this moment, a greasy and obese bald old man walked out from the other side of the room. Seeing Tong Yao at a loss, her eyes lit up and she approached her step by step. A delicate and tender little girl, Wen Wen said it well. The quality is indeed very high. Tong Yao suddenly realized that the old man's name Wen Wen was her manager. Cheng Wen Wen. No wonder she suddenly showed kindness and didn't need to clean the toilet. She wanted to give her to this greasy old rascal. As the old boss was about to pounce on her, she kept retreating. You stay away from me. Tong Yao snapped. Girl, please cooperate, otherwise you won't feel well in the back. The old troublemaker had a face full of flesh and couldn't help but smile. With a big yellow tooth exposed and an unpleasant breath, Tong Yao couldn't help but feel dizzy. It's so disgusting. As the old troublemaker was about to grab her shoulder, she turned her gaze and smiled gently, okay, I'm quite looking forward to it. The old rascal laughed even happier, his flesh visibly trembling. Seeing him relax her guard, Tong Yao secretly glanced at the ashtray next to her. Taking advantage of his lack of attention, she forcefully smashed forward, then turned around and quickly grabbed the door and fled. Ah! The painful scream came from behind, and Tong Yao didn't have the time to look back. She ran forward without looking back. Bitch woman, catch her for me. Then came the sound of thumping footsteps. In a moment of panic, she saw a slightly closed door not far away. Without even thinking about it, she decisively dodged in, pushed the door and locked it. This series of movements was coherent and smooth, and she patted her chest in shock, taking a heavy breath. Then, she felt a pair of hot wristbands around her waist, and her whole body suddenly stiffened. The dark room was extremely quiet, only the sound of their breathing could be heard. The other person's breathing was slightly heavy, and the warm nasal breath sprayed on the back of her neck. Tong Yao couldn't help but tremble all over, with a hint of panic in her heart. What are you doing? Do you dare to give me medicine? The man's angry voice suppressed the pain, hoarse and expressionless. She felt very familiar with this voice, it was so much like Bo Mayan. Tong Yao quickly regained her composure and said, It's not me, I accidentally broke in. The man behind him remained silent. Soon, she felt the man getting closer. 
His body was cold and damp, like a long cold shower. Ice water seeped through her clothes, alternating between hot and cold, and she couldn't help but feel a sensation. As if he had endured it to the extreme, the man suddenly lifted her horizontally and threw her heavily onto the bed behind him. Help me, I will make you my wife. The man domineeringly enveloped her, his long legs pressing down on her knees. Tong Yao's strength and speed were not as good as men's, and before she could react, the overwhelming kisses had already fallen. The man seemed tireless until it was almost dawn when he gradually fell asleep. New books require care, collection, and tickets. Thank you, babies, end of this chapter. Chapter 2 Get Married You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Get Married Tong Yao was restless all night, and at this moment, the ninja felt uncomfortable all over and got out of bed. He picked up his clothes on the ground, put them on, and quietly left the room. What is she, just leaving the wolf's den and then entering the tiger's den? However, being with this man is always better than being with that old troublemaker. Taking advantage of the moment when she was shaking her mind, he pulled her down together. But she wouldn't be naive enough to think he would keep his promise. Even if he really keeps his promise, she cannot marry him. Bo Mayan will not let her go, let alone let her achieve happiness. Just think of it as having a beautiful dream last night. Just as she was thinking about it, she had just walked to the hotel lobby when she saw Ching Wen Wen walking towards her with an angry face not far away. It was still early morning, and there were not many people in the hall. Chen Wen Wen cursed at Tong Yao recklessly. Bitch, I asked you to clean your room last night. Where did you go? Even now, the complaint phone is still calling me. Do you know that you almost killed me? Tong Yao felt indignant in her heart. It was clear that she had been given to that old troublemaker for cleaning. The other party's gaze immediately drifted to the faint kiss marks on Tong Yao's neck. If you don't look carefully, you won't be able to see them clearly. Okay, so you went to hang out with the dog man. Chen Wenwen's voice was not too loud or too low, enough for her colleagues to hear her, and their gaze turned towards her neck. Tong Yao ignored the surrounding gaze and angrily clenched her fists, staring closely at the person in front of her. Who gave you the power? Why did you give me to that terrible old man? You're crazy. I just asked you to tidy up the room, it was you who skipped the shift halfway and even took a bite back. Chen Wenwen remained calm and said, Tong Yao, don't you like to skip shifts? Then I'll punish you for cleaning out all the bathrooms in this hotel today. You're not allowed to eat until it's over. Ah, manager, you have to stop considering. Su Yen gently tugged at Cheng Wenwen's sleeve on the side, only to be killed back by an eye knife. If you pity her, then you two can go clean the toilet together. Tong Yao glanced coldly at Wen Wen, and before she could finish speaking, she took the lead in leaving. In hotel rooms. Bo Mayan opened his eyes, his cold gaze sweeping through everything around him, and the scattered fragments in the darkness gradually revived. He hasn't had a woman by his side for a long time. At first, he noticed her unease and deliberately relaxed his movements, fearing that being too hasty would harm her. It wasn't until she responded that he took further action. Although in the end, he still lost control. He swept over the empty bed beside him in his spare time. At that time, his mind was already in chaos, and before he could fully understand it, she fled like a rabbit. Last night, it was clear that someone had unclean hands and feet. Coincidentally, she broke in and helped him relieve the medicine, otherwise that person would have succeeded. After a moment of contemplation, Bo Mayan picked up his phone and said, Check, who entered my room last night? The assistant on the other end of the phone, Su Zhan, was obviously taken aback and quickly reacted. He replied coldly, yes. No matter where she goes, he will find her. Bo Mayan got out of bed and saw the aromatherapy not far away. His pitch black eyes darkened a bit. This is the end of last night's celebration banquet. 
My stepmother specially delivered the aromatherapy to the hotel, saying it had a miraculous effect on his headache and could help him sleep well. My stepmother resorted to such despicable means to send a woman to his bed. She only has this little skill. At present, he still needs to find a woman to be his wife, so that his stepmother can take advantage of her early death to push people's hearts towards him. Bo Mayan rubbed his brow and walked out of the room. But I saw the figure of a woman wearing cleaning clothes disappearing at the end of the corridor not far away, followed closely by another person behind her. In the bathroom. Tong Yao looked slightly shocked at the person in front of her. Yao Yao, here's breakfast for you. Su Yen stuffed the bread in her hand into Tong Yao's arms, which she had just secretly bought. You find an opportunity to secretly eat, don't tell anyone. Tong Yao took the bread and stared at Su Yen in front of her with black eyes. She is the only person in the past three years who has not felt sorry for her. He is thousands of times better than other colleagues in the hotel. Unfortunately, if the two of them come too close, it will drag each other into the abyss together, and she cannot do so. Thinking of this, she spoke calmly, Su Yen, you won't. Before she could finish speaking, the closed door behind her was kicked open, and Tong Yao couldn't help but look back. The tall and elegant man walked into the bathroom. As soon as he walked in, there seemed to be infinite pressure all around him, and the air around him seemed to become thin. Tong Yao's spine stiffened, and an uncontrollable surge of fear and trembling surged in her eyes. She spoke in panic. Mr. Bo. He glanced coldly and saw the bread in Tong Yao's hand. With a long hand, he knocked it off her hand. A deep and mellow voice sounded, like high dot quality red wine, with a hint of danger. Tong Yao, hide here during work hours to slack off. Tong Yao did not explain and stood in front of him with her head down, unconsciously letting go of her breath. At this moment, Bo Mayan seemed to have noticed Su Yen beside him. He gave her a faint glance, and his gaze returned to the nursery rhyme. He said lightly, I haven't seen you for three years, and I'm living here quite well. Did he treat her too well, doing the dirtiest and tiring work in the hotel, having time to cheat and even make friends? Tong Yao naturally knew what he was referring to. But he didn't know, because of his previous words, she had to do countless times more work every day than others. At night, I have to take advantage of the absence of anyone to go back to the greasy kitchen floor and rest for a while. For the past three years, every day has been such a dry and tiring life, and she has long been accustomed to it. He suddenly chuckled out loud, and the sound made Tong Yao feel a bit hairy, causing her to shiver all over. Bo Mayan's sharp eyes narrowed slightly, and his eyebrows were filled with disgust. Tong Yao, I changed my mind. Tong Yao suddenly looked up, her eyes filled with fear. She knew that Bo Mayan wouldn't let him go so easily. He must have had a new and better way to torture her. Her already fair little face instantly turned pale as paper, and she couldn't stand steadily under her feet. She fell helplessly onto the ground. Bo Mayan looked down at Tong Yao from a high position, his gloomy face rarely showing a satisfied expression. He slowly leaned forward, his fingertips slowly sliding down from his face to his delicate neck, and then his fingers tightened as he grabbed her neck. Tong Yao, you can't escape. From today on, you will be my slave, and I will humiliate you anytime, anywhere, at all times. Bo Mayan lowered his eyes, admiring her painful expression. With a smile on his lips, he gradually leaned over his ear, and a voice like Satan rang out again, you know, you should pray for me to die soon. As long as I live for one day, you can't expect to get better. He suddenly let go, and Tong Yao, who had lost her confinement, collapsed on the ground, panting and coughing uncontrollably. The man looked at the woman on the ground with disgust in his eyes, then turned around and left, with an outstanding and imposing figure. Follow me. Tong Yao's eyes were red and she asked in a hoarse voice, Where are you going? Go get married. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Happy Wedding You are listening at NovelFull.audio
Chapter 3 Happy Wedding, Are You Okay? Seeing that Bo Mayan had already left, Su Yen quickly stepped forward and helped Tong Yao up. Thank you. Tong Yao's face turned pale, and an ugly smile came from the corner of her lips. You should stay away from me from now on. Otherwise, it will implicate her. Su Yen couldn't help but sigh as he looked at Tong Yao's distant figure. How did she offend Mr. Bo? Tong Yao deliberately moved slowly towards the side of the car. I don't know who he will be dragged to marry later, and whether the other person will be more nauseating than the old man last night. Thinking of this, the unknown fear swept over Tong Yao's whole body. She stopped in front of the car door and refused to get in. I can skip it. Bo Mayan pinched the back of Tong Yao's neck with one hand and rudely threw her into the car. With a loud bang, Tong Yao's head slammed heavily against the other side of the car door. She suppressed the excruciating pain and sat in the corner, trembling. Bo Mayan is even more terrifying than the devil. Bo Mayan, I know you hate me, but I am human, not something you can casually give me as a gift. The words spoken were like sinking into the sea, immersed in the dimly lit car, surrounded only by the sound of the car engine. Tong Yao also gradually lost hope. She hasn't eaten since last night and was even given to someone else by the manager. Now she wants to marry someone she doesn't know thinking of this, she felt a pang of grievance, and soon her vision became blurred. She bit her lower lip desperately, preventing tears from flowing out. Bo Mayan lit a cigarette, turned his eyebrows and eyes in the misty smoke, and casually cast his gaze on her, his eyes deep and dark. Seeing Tong Yao's round eyes soaked in tears, it became even more pitiful. Bo Mayan's heart was shaken for an instant. No, it won't. She is the daughter of an enemy, you cannot be soft-hearted towards her. The road is still long, and he must torture her well. Bo Mayan's expression returned to his usual coldness, and he anxiously loosened his tie, feeling his breathing more relaxed. Then a small hand suddenly climbed up and he looked down. Tong Yao knelt under him and tightly grasped her hand. Mr. Bo, please, I can atone for it in any way, but only this, she said she was crying like a pear blossom with rain, and anyone who saw her couldn't help but feel heartbroken. Please, don't do this, she said Bo Mayan was momentarily stunned. This voice. Last night, that woman's voice sounded like hers, shouldn't it be no? Bo Mayan quickly denied the newly emerged idea. Where is their comparability between them? He pinched her chin and curved the corners of his mouth, as if mocking, it's not easy for you to beg for mercy. However, unfortunately, it's no use begging me because the person you're going to marry is me. Bo Mayan lowered his eyes and looked at the little person lightly, with no ups and downs in his deep black eyes. Tong Yao looked up in shock. His casual words were like a thunderbolt to her, and time seemed to have stood still for a few seconds. Is it so unbelievable to marry me? Bo Mayan looked at Tong Yao below him with great interest and said, If you don't marry me, how can I torture and humiliate you any time and anywhere? After speaking, he lowered his head and played with the silver watch in his hand, but his thoughts drifted to this morning. Not long after he woke up, his stepmother Ji Yun couldn't wait to call him, pretending to be concerned about how he rested last night and whether his headache had improved. When he slept well, Ji Yun was clearly taken aback on the phone. After a few more polite words, the two quickly hung up the phone. Ji Yun wants to send a woman with a deep understanding to his side as the future Mrs. Bo. For the present, the only solution is to let Tong Yao temporarily replace her. Civil Affairs Bureau She never thought that the ultimate way of redemption would be to become his wife. In the past three years, she has even put in all her efforts to survive. With such a high position, there is no place for her to sit. Bo Mayan won't let her go so easily. After getting married, life will only become more difficult. Tong Yao was not very enthusiastic throughout, even the photographer beside her reminded, Ms. Tong, on such a happy day, smile happily. My wife was too excited last night and didn't sleep well. 
Bo Mayan swept her over and brought her body over. The two of them were now in a very intimate posture, like a couple in a passionate relationship. Little did she know that Tong Yao's big hand on her waist was secretly exerting force, and she had to tug at the corners of her mouth, but she smiled bitterly. Tong Yao, you better cooperate, otherwise I'm not sure what I'll do. Tong Yao's eyes were empty, like walking corpses and flesh, and they finished the marriage process together. Happy Newlywed The staff handed over the marriage certificate with a smile, and Bo Mayan took it with a smile, but did not take it out to look through it. He put it directly into his pocket. Then he pulled Tong Yao away without saying a word. The car slowly drove away. Along the way, the two remained silent. After pondering for a long time, Tong Yao finally spoke up, Bo Mayan, so this is your new way of torture. Are you satisfied, Tong Yao? Tong Yao bit her lip and didn't speak anymore. The car drove into a wealthy area and stopped at a private residence. Jinghao Garden This is an imposing and gothic-style castle, with a black hollowed-out and carved entrance design, circular arched windows, and stone corners. Everywhere, it exudes a romantic and noble atmosphere. His mansion, like himself, showcases the imperial temperament to the fullest. Tong Yao stood awkwardly in the living room. In the magnificent villa, Tong Yao was wearing a T-dot shirt and long pants, which did seem a bit abrupt. At that moment, Tong Yao felt like a clown in front of this noble and proud man. Bo Mayan threw the clothes in his hand to the maid on the side and said, take her down, wash them clean, and deliver them to my room. After finishing speaking, he lifted his leg and left. Tong Yao was shocked, what? I'll go to his room later. No way, it would be terrible if he could see all the kissing marks on his body. Moreover, just the thought of sharing a room with him later made her nervous to the point of difficulty breathing. At this moment, the servants around them began to discuss at a volume that Tong Yao could hear. Why is she dressed so? Mr. Bo is taking a woman home for the first time. However, aesthetics do need to be improved. The butler couldn't help but scold, what are you muttering about? You can't be rude, she's Mrs. Bo. You work more and gossip less. Everyone couldn't help but silence and dispersed, and the few people who had just talked nonsense also apologized one after another. Tong Yao's thoughts were not here at all. She was now tense all over, and her palms were already sweating. We must escape and cannot continue to stay here. Mrs. Bo. A servant approached with concern and asked. Tong Yao's thoughts were interrupted, and she hurriedly replied, Ah, it's okay. The servant was clearly taken aback, she was responding to their apology just now. After quickly thinking it through, he asked again, Mrs. Bo, I'm asking you what kind of scented bath solution you would like to use later, with roses. It's all right, you can do whatever you want. The servant was pushed away by Tong Yao in confusion. When she returned, she saw the scene in front of her and panicked for a moment. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Good morning, my wife. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Good morning, my wife The servant quickly threw down what was in his hand and hurriedly approached to check. Tong Yao lay pale in the black bathtub, her ink hair winding and the water gently lifting the corners of her clothes, giving her a seemingly silent appearance. Ah, madam. Hurry up and have someone come. Bo Mayan, who was about to return to his room, paused in his footsteps, frowned and turned around when he saw the butler hurriedly approaching. Mr. Bo, it's not good. My wife drowned and fainted in the bathroom. Bo Mayan didn't take it seriously at all and turned to leave. Don't worry about her, she'll come back to life soon, he said, Mr. Bo, would you like to take a look? Madam's situation is not very good. Upon seeing the butler's solemn expression, Bo Mayan restrained his expression and strode towards the bathroom. At this point, the bathroom was already in chaos, taking turns performing CPR for Tong Yao. When Bo Mayan came over, the servants retreated one after another, making way for the newcomers. 
Mr. Bo. Bo Mayan looked down at the lifeless woman lying on the ground. Her black hair was disheveled and scattered on the ground, her clothes were already soaked and tightly pressed against her body. Her delicate little face was now as pale as paper, like a toy forgotten by her owner in a corner. His heart suddenly tightened, and his heart suddenly jumped wildly. What are you all doing in a daze? Prepare the car. Bo Mayan's cold eyes were as terrifying as bloodthirsty. At this moment, he didn't care if his coat would get wet. He took a step forward, bent over, picked her up, and strode towards the door. He only had one thought in his heart, she couldn't die, he wanted to save her. Tong Yao, your life now belongs to me. Before I agree to your death, please live well and redeem me. The car parked steadily in front of Kangen Hospital, and medical staff were already prepared at the door waiting. Tong Yao was quickly pulled into the emergency room. Gu Yanli had just come down from another operating table when he heard that Bo Mayan had arrived. He immediately went to find him. Lao Bo. Gu Yanli was dressed in a white coat, straight and upright, and waved towards his slender figure from a distance. I just took a special look at your woman, she's quite beautiful. Bo Mayan's face was still not as pretty as before, just don't die. Can you come to my office for a meeting? Gu Yanli took the initiative to invite him. The results of the inspection have come down. Bo Mayan gave a faint nod and finally glanced at the door of the emergency room before turning and leaving. Gu Yanli's office is tidy, and when he opens the door, he can still smell the faint woody fragrance lingering around. Bo Mayan sat casually on the sofa, taking the report form handed over by Gu Yanli. Look directly at the bottom inspection result. Obstruction of the vas deferens. Gu Yanli, holding a cup of coffee, leisurely leaned against his desk and said, What medicine or food have you been taking for a long time? Bo Mayan lowered his eyes in contemplation. His headache has worsened since his father's death sometimes to the point where it is even difficult to achieve a normal life. Gu Yanli said that this psychological pain can only be relieved by prescribing some painkillers, and cannot achieve the root cause. I don't know how to let Ji Yun know about this matter, so I specially invited a well.known traditional Chinese medicine practitioner to prescribe a prescription for him to take it every day. After taking medication for a period of time, the symptoms of headache have significantly improved. It's been a long time since he started taking it, he's considering stopping his medication. Looking at Bo Mayan's gloomy and terrifying face, Gu Yanli added with a smile, but don't be afraid, this disease is easy to cure. In the VIP ward area, the pitch black night contrasts with the eerie and terrifying hospital hallway, leaving the surroundings desolate. The faint sound of machines running in the ward can be heard. The sound of leather shoes stepping on the ground went from far to near, and finally stopped in front of the hospital room. After staying for a few seconds, a ghostly door was pushed in. Tong Yao was lying quietly on the hospital bed, her complexion returning to some redness, and her eyelashes curled up again. If we ignore the hanging bottle in her hand, she is almost no different from ordinary people. I underestimated you, Tong Yao. It's a pity that you can't die yet. The figure of Bo Mayan shrouded, with one hand supporting Tong Yao's side, and the other hand gently pulling up her hair on the ear side. But the depths of my eyes were filled with a surging coldness. He quietly disappeared into the darkness again. The next morning, the bright sunlight shone into the ward, and the nurse entered with a suspended bottle and walked straight to the side to handle the needle in her hand. Miss Tong, you can be discharged from the hospital after finishing the hanging bottle today. Hey, Miss Tong, where are you? The nurse looked around and found that the ward was empty. The messy sheets on the bed showed that there were still people living here just now. Tong Ya woke up in the early morning. When she woke up, she was completely empty and there was no bodyguard guarding the door, which was exactly what she wanted. Yesterday, I deliberately drowned myself in time before the servant returned, with the aim of creating an opportunity to escape. 
Otherwise, with her abilities, even with wings inserted, she would not be able to escape from the heavily guarded Jinghao Garden. She persisted and dared not sleep until she sneaked out during the gap between the nurses' changing shifts. The first thing to do after escaping is to go to another hospital. She plans to see how her mother is doing, and in the past three years, she doesn't know if her mother has awakened. Tong Yao followed the path, carefully bowing her head and briskly walking, before finally stopping in front of a hospital. The hospital area in the early morning was clear and cold, and Tong Yao followed her memory to find the ward where Tong's mother, Zhang Jin Gru, was located. She was lying flat on the bed, her already thin and weak body filled with tubes, appearing even more stiff and weak. Her pale face, devoid of blood, had a faint hint of blue. She is even thinner and weaker than what she saw three years ago. Tong Yao dare not linger, she is satisfied with just looking at her mother from a distance. She has something more important now. She needs to go see her father and ask what happened to that case back then. Then temporarily leave this city. Time is tight, actions must be fast. Tong Yao quickly arrived at an old and dilapidated residential area in the suburbs of the city. At the moment when Father Tong opened the door, both father and daughter shed tears. In just three years, Tong's father's temples have turned gray. Back then, it was Tong Yao who secretly came crying and begged Bo Mayan to let go of her father, carrying her father behind her back. She could redeem all her sins on her own. Bo Mayan agreed and placed her under house arrest in the hotel, doing the dirtiest and tiring work, living a life that was not as good as a pig or a dog. Afterwards, the child father used his only savings to live in this small rental house. Due to Bo Mayan's reasons, no company uses him, and he has to sort out waste to maintain his household. Over the past three years, she has had a very bad life. Unexpectedly, her father has also been so haggard. Tong Yao didn't have time to ask anything else and went straight to the topic, Dad, tell me the truth. What exactly happened to the case back then? This matter was a lifelong knot in Tong's father's heart. Hearing Tong Yao say so, I couldn't help but shed tears. Yao Yao, if I say I was framed, would you believe me? Tong Yao nodded, tears swirling in her eyes. I believe you. My daughter will definitely find the truth. Dad, take care of yourself. She hastily bid farewell and rushed to the airport, racing against time to stop a car. In the car, she hurriedly booked the next flight and it will take off in an hour. It doesn't matter which city she goes to, the main thing is to leave here. After booking the tickets, a news message popped up on her phone, and she, who was originally planning to turn off the screen, clicked in by a strange coincidence. Later, she saw the current hot search, but the top few made her breathe a little. Hashtag explosive. Hong Kong Diamond Bachelor Bo Mayan announces his marriage. Who exactly is Mrs. Bo Sacred? Hashtag Bo's CEO, Bo Mayan, publicly presents photos of the bride's profile and publicly announces the spread of dog food. Hashtag Mr. Bo's question, the entire network is waiting for Mrs. Bo's response. What are these all about? These topics are all related to the same person. Bo Mayan Elijah she shook her hands and clicked on his latest post. Good morning, my wife. Where have you been all this time and the following picture is a high dot definition surveillance screenshot of her cleaning in the hotel. She only had her profile cut off, revealing her slender neck and beautiful skin, all below her neck. Indeed, otherwise her cleaning uniform would have been exposed. Tong Yao looked dumbfounded. She knew that the last sentence was a love story in the eyes of others, but for her, it was a warning. Her blood seemed to freeze in an instant, unaware that the car had already arrived at the airport. The driver called out several times before Tong Yao regained her senses. She pulled out the only 200 yuan bills from her wallet and handed them to the driver. Open the door and get off the car, running forward vigorously. Bo Mayan already knows, she must hurry up. The journey was smooth all the way until the security check. There was a long queue ahead, 
and then Yao kept looking at her phone time. She was almost missing the plane. Unable to resist, she ran to the nearby staff for help and said, Big brother, please, I won't be able to catch the plane. Can you let me go through the security check first? Don't tell me, tell the passengers in front of you, said the security guard, without even lifting his eyes Tong Yao was about to cry. Bo Mayan must have arranged for people to search for her everywhere. The fewer people she saw now, the better. She didn't want to cause too much sensation. So she reached out and pulled at the security guard, please be accommodating. At this moment, the security officer just glanced up at her, and the words of reproach were swallowed back by Xing Sheng. He grabbed Tong Yao's sleeve with one hand and took out his phone from his pocket with the other, constantly contrasting the two. You come with me. Tong Yao felt a sense of joy in her heart and quickly followed her forward. I saw the security officer leading Tong Yao to turn left and right, with fewer and fewer people walking, and it didn't seem like the way to board the plane at all. Tong Yao gradually became puzzled. Big brother, did you go the wrong way? Tong Yao looked at the person in front of her with a guarded expression. She was still too careless and easily deceived by others. That's right, Miss Tong. Mr. Bo said he wanted you to wait for him here. After speaking, the two of them had already stood in front of a door, and the elder brother came forward to open the door for her, which could not be refused. Okay. Tong Yao agreed softly, but her eyes kept glancing to the side. Taking advantage of the other party's lack of attention, she bit the root of her teeth, dodged, and without hesitation, ran away along the same path. However, without taking two steps, she was grabbed by the security guard at the back collar. Miss Tong, Mr. Bo still said, your mother is in his hands now. I advise you to be calm. Upon hearing these words, Tong Yao immediately breathed a sigh of relief. The security officer easily carried her into the room and locked the door. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Pleasing Me You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Pleasing Me When the room door was pushed open again, Tong Yao suddenly looked up and met the cold and lifeless gaze of Bo Mayan. He just stood there motionless, and the powerful aura emanating from his body was enough to intimidate everyone. Tong Yao, you have a lot of courage. Bo Mayan's voice couldn't detect any anger. Everything is coming at me, you let go of my mother. Tong Yao clenched her fists tightly and humbly begged. This is the end of your escape, you will have to pay the price for it. I'm sorry, I won't run away again in the future. Tong Yao bit her lower lip tightly, with force so strong that she could almost taste the bloody smell. Hong Kong is his world, how can she escape it? Moreover, she still has her parents, and life and death are in his hands. Their Tong family doesn't owe him anything, she stayed here to have a chance to uncover the truth about the Bo father case back then. Bo Mayan squinted his eyes coldly, took elegant steps with his long legs, sat down on the sofa, leaned back, and coldly ordered, come over. Tong Yao was stiff all over, and the person had an imperial posture, as if condescending, waiting for his slaves to submit to him. She obediently walked over. As soon as Tong Yao walked up to her, she was rudely grabbed by Bo Mayan's neck, forcing her to look up at him and say, if there's another time, you know what the consequences are. Tong Yao trembled and nodded, as if her whole body was immersed in the cold water. Bo Mayan snorted coldly, released his hand, and leaned back into the sofa. Tong Yao thought of Jean Jin Gru who had just been transported away and wanted to ask him where he had transported her. How is mother's health now? She hesitated to speak, afraid of provoking Bo Mayan again, and swallowed back the words in her stomach. As if he knew what Tong Yao was thinking at the moment, he glanced sideways at her. Want to know your mother's whereabouts? Tong Yao nodded, her clear eyes sparkling with tears. Then please me, he ordered again. Tong Yao's face turned red and white. She doesn't know how to please men and is completely clueless about men and women. Just clumsily leaning forward, taking the initiative to embrace his neck and kiss his lips. 
Based on her feelings, she is trying to please him. Bo Mayan gently parted his head and her lips landed on his face. She didn't know why Bo Mayan suddenly avoided him. His wet eyes were staring at him, while Bo Mayan's gaze remained as cold and silent as ever. She is now sitting entirely on his lap, and in order to prevent her from slipping down, she has to climb up his neck. The indoor atmosphere suddenly rose in ambiguity. Bo Mayan could clearly feel Tong Yao's rapid breathing, and her warm breath sprayed onto his neck, causing his Adam's apple to roll up and down involuntarily. He looked at the woman in front of him. Two pairs of beautiful eyes intertwined, and his lips were moist with water. Just lightly touching his cheek, he unexpectedly felt a sensation. He suddenly detested this feeling. She is the daughter of an enemy, and the hatred of patricide is irreconcilable. He should not have feelings for her. He mercilessly brushed his sleeve and swept her to the ground. Tong Yao cleverly climbed up from the ground, knowing that she had failed and had not succeeded in pleasing him. The man in front of her was still as cold as the moon, without any emotions or warmth, and she felt a bit embarrassed. Can only achieve this level. You don't even know how to please men. Tong Yao gritted her teeth, he even turned his face away. What else could she do? Is it difficult to take off your clothes indoors for a hot dance? Get lost. Bo Mayan's words were as precious as gold, and with a long stride, he had already walked to the door, as if giving orders to the assistant at the door. Since you've been doing so well as a hotel cleaner before, let's continue doing your old job at Bo's building. After speaking, Bo Mayan left here without looking back. Tong Yao breathed a sigh of relief, got up from the ground, and saw the bodyguard waiting at the door. She understood in her heart, let's go. After leaving the airport, Bo Mayan's car had already left, and Tong Yao looked helplessly at the bodyguard on the side. Do we have to take the bus back? The bodyguard nodded. For a moment, Tong Yao wanted to laugh. This bodyguard was also unlucky enough to be arranged by the unpredictable boss to take the bus with her. However, she can do anything as long as she doesn't stay by Bo Mayan's side now. If she didn't dare to be too grand around him, she could still be more comfortable doing cleaning. Bo's building. Assistant Su Jean knocked on the door and entered the CEO's office. Mr. Bo, my wife has just arrived at the company and her mother has already arranged to stay at Kongen Hospital. Kongen Hospital is a private hospital of the Bo family, and the doctors there are all top dot notch doctors who the Bo family has spent a lot of money to hire, with superb medical skills. Bo Mayan nodded and said, I won't tell her for now. With Zhang Jin Gru in hand, unexpectedly, Tong Yao couldn't make any big moves and could only obediently obey his commands. Yes. Bo Mayan raised his hand and gently rubbed his slender fingers at the center of his eyebrows, how's that woman doing? Su Zhan lowered his head and looked uneasy. Mr. Bo, we haven't found it yet. We are working hard to follow the clues and will investigate as soon as possible. It's okay. Bo Mayan brushed his sleeves and casually clicked on the surveillance camera in front of the computer. We can't rush this matter, we need quality, not speed, we can't make mistakes. Yes, Mr. Bo. Bo Mayan looked blankly at the surveillance footage on the computer. Tong Yao was wearing a disheveled cleaning uniform and dragging the floor seriously. A few strands of broken hair hung down in front of her forehead, covering her better face. This cleaning uniform couldn't suppress her elegant temperament. The surrounding environment seemed to have no impact on her. She is clever, but she has her own sharpness. During these three years, whenever he thought of his deceased father, he would check the surveillance footage to see how she had been lately. The more miserable her life was, the more comfortable he felt, almost reaching a pathological state. However, he did not see a scene that satisfied him. Tong Yao has gradually mastered this way of life and has become accustomed to it. Perhaps, that incident did not happen back then, and Tong Yao is a person worthy of his admiration. Suddenly, another person appeared in the surveillance footage. Miss Jiang, Jiang Ruyin. 
There are many people who like Bo Mayan, but Jiang Ruyan's pursuit of him is only talked about by the ladies of Hong Kong's aristocratic families. Including but not limited to Buying an advertising space on the tallest building in Hong Kong to confess his feelings, Bo Mayan going abroad before leaving, Jiang Ruyan buying tickets to keep up, the horror level is comparable to illegitimate food that morning, Jiang Ruyan invited Ji Yun to have coffee, but heard him say that Bo Mayan had officially announced his marriage. She wanted to see which woman could be so shameless and steal her brother from beneath her eyelids. Jiang Ruyan thought angrily, and the high heels under her feet were also stepping on, making a loud noise that could be heard on the entire floor. These employees all recognized Jiang Ruyan and could hear her footsteps. They all lowered their heads and stepped back, the further away they were, the better. They couldn't afford to provoke this young lady. Only the new Tong Yao was unaware and continued to drag the ground seriously. Get out of the way, you're on my way. Jiang Ruyan's voice rose as she looked down at Tong Yao, who was mopping the floor in front of her. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Brother Mayan really fell into the fox's den. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 6 Brother Mayan really fell into the fox's den. The other party's sharp voice pierced Tong Yao's eardrums, and she couldn't help but frown and look up. Madam, you also saw me mopping the floor. Tong Yao reached out and pointed to the side, there is an open space next to me. You can walk over there. After patiently answering, Tong Yao lowered her head and prepared to continue mopping the floor. Hey, you're just a janitor, why are you so arrogant? Jiang Ruyan had a hard time getting angry and even dared to talk back to her when she saw someone doing cleaning. She suddenly lost her breath and reached forward to grab Tong Yao's collar. Tong Yao was dragged and stumbled, her feet unstable, and she almost fell into the dirty bucket in front of her. Watching this scene, Jiang Ruyan suddenly felt good and lowered her head to cover her mouth, chuckling lightly. Oh, I'm really sorry, she said although she said so, her gaze towards Tong Yao was an undisguised mockery and contempt. Tong Yao completely ignored her and lowered her head to tidy up the clothes that had just been pulled and wrinkled. Don't argue like a madman. Jian Ruyin, however, refused to let go, let alone because the marriage of Bo Mayan was not going well and she was worried that there was no place to get angry. How could she be so easily let go of her? Hey, you see me clearly. I'm the future boss lady here, and I have the ability to fire you. If you see me in the future, stay away from me. Do you hear me? I am still a legitimate boss lady. Tong Yao burst into an extremely bright smile and said, Madam, your home is not connected to an internet cafe. Can't you see Mr. Bo's official announcement today? Excuse me, is that woman you? Speaking of which, as soon as Mr. Bo got married, you were hoping for his divorce. Aren't you afraid that Mr. Bo would know how to blame you? Tong Yao's voice was clear and bright, and Jiang Ruyan's face was filled with anger, turning blue and purple. She let out a cold snort in frustration. Judging from your arrogance, those who didn't know thought you were Mrs. Bo. Tong Yao picked up the dirty bucket next to her and prepared to stay away from the woman. She murmured softly, Do you think everyone is like you? Devoted to marrying Bo Mayan. Stop. A sharp male voice came from behind, and Tong Yao's body stiffened as she carried the bucket. She slowly turned back to look. The man walked out of the elevator and the imperial aura of his every move intimidated everyone present. Jian Ruyan was also stunned for a few seconds and ran to Bo Mayan's side. I don't know how much he heard from their conversation just now. Brother Mu Yen, why are your employees so arrogant? They almost pushed me down just now. Tong Yao was already chilly when she heard Jian Ruyan's voice, but she didn't expect that the villain would report it first. She almost pulled her down just now. Bo Mayan glanced at Tong Yao with her head hanging down in front of her and his gaze swept inch by inch from his body. So, how do you want to punish her? Tong Yao looked at Bo Mayan incredulously, and he only listened to her one-dot-sided words. 
if he didn't understand the truth, would he punish her? The latter still faced Tong Yao's questioning gaze with a normal expression. I want her to apologize to me. Bo Mayan still looked at her calmly, gesturing to the side. Tong Yao immediately understood his meaning and felt a chill in her heart, stubbornly biting her lips. However, she couldn't imagine the consequences of going against Bo Mayan. What are you waiting for? Apologize quickly. With someone supporting her, Jian Ruyin's confidence has become even stronger. Now, she is like a proud peacock, her tail is about to rise to the sky. After a long time, Tong Yao apologized in a low voice, I'm sorry. Jian Ruyin did not continue to make things difficult for her. Just now was just a small incident, and the most important thing cannot be forgotten. She ran to Bo Mayan's side and reached out to embrace his arm, her voice slightly tinged with grievances. Brother Mayan, why did you get married so suddenly? Bo Mayan frowned and calmly pulled down his hand from his arm. His voice was neither loud nor small, and everyone present could hear him. Miss Jiang, there's no need to explain my personal matters to you, right? Bo Mayan's tone, as if carrying the icy cold of Siberia, made Jiang Ruyin's face turn pale and he froze in place for a moment. Also, I'll take care of my employees. Miss Jiang would be better off taking care of her own affairs first. Jiang Ruyin looked at the back of Bo Mayan who had already left and stomped her feet. Pursuing or not pursuing was not enough. Do you need to take care of someone who is in poor hygiene? Since Brother Mu Yen is unwilling to tell her who that little fox spirit is, she will investigate on her own. Finally, he glanced at Tong Yao beside him, who was attentively dragging the ground and showed no interest in what had just happened here. Oh, this is another fox spirit. Brother Mu Yen really fell into the fox's den. She rolled her eyes at Tong Yao and turned around to leave. At night after work, Su Zhan came to the cleaning department to look for Tong Yao and whispered, Madam, Mr. Bo is waiting for you in the parking lot. Tong Yao tugged at the corner of her mouth, revealing a bitter smile. She doesn't think it's necessary now. Since she's afraid of being discovered about their relationship, why not take a car back? She walked one by one with Su Zhan to the parking lot. She had never carefully observed Bo Mayan's car before, but this time she saw clearly that he was driving a black Bentley Musang today. Su Zhan opened the car door for her. Bo Mayan was wearing a black custom dot made suit, completely lost in the dim and unclear light. Her eyes instantly sank deep into the dark and gloomy eyes of the other party. He is like Satan, she suddenly has some difficulty breathing. But he still bravely sat in. The car drove calmly on the road. After a long silence, Bo Mayan took the lead in speaking, gently lifting the broken hair behind his ear with one hand, but his voice was rare and gentle. Tong Yao, have you felt very aggrieved in the past three years? Tong Yao remained silent, clenching her fists tightly, as if her nails were about to be embedded in her flesh. Seeing Tong Yao remain silent, Bo Mayan's hand gradually moved down, pinching her chin and forcing her to look up at him. His gaze remained as fierce as ever, and the gentleness he had just experienced seemed like a momentary illusion. Then you also have to bear it, there must be someone in your Tong family who will pay the price for it. After speaking, he released his hand and took out a delicate handkerchief from his pocket, carefully wiping the hand that had just touched her. There was a hint of discomfort on Tong Yao's face. Does he even feel dirty touching her now? End of this chapter Chapter 7 Madam, please have a meal. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 7 Madam, please have a meal, Bo Mayan, if I were to say, there were other hidden facts about the case back then. The figure of Bo Mayan, who was wiping his fingers, suddenly paused, and his sinister gaze immediately turned towards him. Tong Yao was frightened and her whole body shook. I saw him slowly retracting his handkerchief back into his pocket, leaning his upper body forward and pressing it down, with a terrifying aura. He raised his hand to clamp Tong Yao's neck, and the force on his hand gradually tightened. 
you still have the face to mention the case from back then. How much did your father charge the other party back then? Hmm. The most important evidence during the trial disappeared without a trace. Don't you think it's ridiculous to tell me there's another secret now? Tong Yao, don't pretend to be innocent and sympathetic in front of me, you don't deserve it. She could feel the air in her lungs gradually being emptied, her hands weakly patting Bo Mayan's arms. Just as Tong Yao felt that the last trace of air was about to be exhausted, Bo Mayan let go of his hand. Cough. Tong Yao couldn't help but cough, desperately breathing in the air. Bo Mayan looked at Tong Yao with disgust in his eyes, his handsome face bulging with veins due to his recent anger. Stop. The driver didn't dare to show any signs of neglect and quickly turned around to park the car on the roadside. Tong Yao was thrown out of the car. Walk home on your own. If you dare to run, you know what will happen. The black Bentley Musum swept away from the dust. Tong Yao got up from the ground, ignored the gazes cast around her, and slowly walked forward. Jinghao Garden is not very close, and it takes at least an hour and a half to walk. Looking at the benefits, at least we won't be able to see Bo Mayan during this period. Tong Yao is very good at maximizing the spirit of Ah Q and naming it Ah Tong Spirit, which is the survival rule she has been using for the past three years. It's quite practical for her. At around seven o'clock, Tong Yao walked back to Jinghao Garden. She was half an hour late than expected, walking for too long, and her shoes didn't fit well, so she walked a bit slower. At night, the Jinghao Garden is empty and quiet. From the courtyard, only the lobby on the first floor of the villa is brightly lit, and a faint crimson jump can be seen from the window of the third floor balcony. Tong Yao, who was about to face Bo Mayan, was all nervous. She adjusted her breathing at the door for a long time before pushing it in. The butler is waiting at the door, and Bo Mayan is not here. Tong Yao breathed a sigh of relief. Madam, dinner is ready. The butler led Tong Yao to the dining table, and Tong Yao stood still for a moment, looking at the dishes in front of her. The dish is very simple, there is only one dish, which is tomato and scrambled eggs. It must have been specially ordered by Bo Mayan to be cooked by the chef. She doesn't choose the dishes, after all, for the past three years, it's been good to have a bite to eat. However, she is allergic to eggs, and the allergy is so severe that she cannot eat ingredients that have been touched with eggs. If not treated in time, it can even be fatal. That is to say, she can't even take a sip of this whole dish. Madam, what's the problem? The butler couldn't help but ask when he saw that Tong Yao had not taken her seat. Tong Yao turned her head and smiled pure, butler, can you bring a bowl of staple food? At the end of the dinner, Tong Yao cleaned the rice in her hands, but the stir-dot-fried tomato and scrambled eggs in front of her did not move. The servant gently cleared the table. On the other side, a middle-dot-aged man wearing a work uniform stepped forward respectfully when he saw that Tong Yao had finished his meal. Madam, Mr. Bo said to ask you to finish your meal and go upstairs to find him. Tong Yao was quickly taken to the entrance of the master bedroom on the third floor, and the butler left after showing the way. In an instant, only she was left in the dim corridor. She hesitated and raised her hand, pausing for three seconds before the hand finally fell. Dong dong dong. The heavy knocking on the door rang three times, but no one inside answered. Just as Tong Yao hesitated about whether to directly push the door in, the door was forcefully pulled open from inside, carrying a gust of wind that scared Tong Yao back two steps. The bedroom was not lit, and a strong smell of smoke filled the air, causing Tong Yao to cough twice. Then she met the man's eyes in the darkness, fierce and sinister like a wolf. She was tense all over, staring closely at the man's next move. Where have you been, coming back so late? Bo Mayan's voice was low and clear, with a certain suppressed, cold and violent tone. I didn't go anywhere, I walked a bit slower. Tong Yao returned truthfully and saw that the other party was still staring at her. She had to say again, if you don't believe me, 
you can definitely investigate me. Bo Mayan's face seemed to ease a bit before turning around and turning on the wall lamp in the bedroom. He unbuttoned his shirt at the collar and sat elegantly on the nearby sofa. The black shirt clearly outlined his tall figure, like a fierce beast, giving orders in a low voice. Come here. Tong Yao lowered her gaze slightly and obediently walked up to him. According to the butler, you haven't eaten a bite of tonight's food. Tong Yao's heart tightened. She had guessed that Bo Mayan would know about this, but she didn't expect him to know so quickly. If to be honest, she is allergic to eggs, perhaps he will use this to torture her in the future. No way. We can't let him know. Tong Yao bit her lip and said slowly, I prefer rice. Bo Mayan's eyebrows twitched with a beat, his black eyes holding onto her chin and forcing him to look up at her. Tong Yao, do you think I can believe it? It's me. I don't like it. Bo Mayan snorted coldly and released his hand. Tong Yao was surprised for a moment. This doesn't seem like Bo Mayan's personality. How could he be so talkative tonight? Coincidentally, I'll help you get rid of picky eating during this period of time. Bo Mayan stood up and looked coldly at Tong Yao beside him, his eyes slightly mocking. He ordered, bring it up. The bedroom door on the third floor was pushed open, and a servant came in with the stir-dot-fried tomato and scrambled eggs and stood beside Tong Yao respectfully. Madam, please have a meal. Tong Yao understood and frowned even deeper. She turned to look at Bo Mayan and said, I don't want to eat. Bo Mayan, you must be too lenient in your management. You even have to manage what I eat. It seems that you are still unclear about your position. Bo Mayan casually spoke, made a gesture, and the servant beside him walked to Tong Yao with vegetables. Seeing him forcing her to be fed, Tong Yao instinctively ran to the bedroom door. As soon as she opened the door, she saw two burly bodyguards standing at the door, staring at the newcomer with fierce eyes. Tong Yao turned around and saw Bo Mayan lazily leaning aside, his hands clasped around his chest, enjoying the beautiful scene. Suddenly, she stopped and her cheeks turned red. Are you crazy? Are you happy to force others to do things they don't want to do? Bo Mayan seems to be in a good mood now, and Tong Yao's output has not had any impact on him. Eat it, being picky about food is essential for balanced nutrition. Bo Mayan looked at Tong Yao's figure without any concealment and said, Why don't you be too thin and shriveled? It's not because of you. Before Tong Yao finished speaking, the servant beside him took this opportunity to feed Tong Yao a bite of food. Woo woo. Tong Yao struggled to break free from the constraints of the servant and plunged into the master bedroom's toilet, starting to vomit. There were footsteps coming from behind, and Tong Yao weakly turned around and said, You're satisfied. Then his legs softened, and he instinctively held on to Tong Yao, revealing the disgust in his eyes. Is this woman intentional? End of this chapter. Did you take chapter 8 seriously this time? You are listening at novel full dot audio. Did you take chapter 8 seriously this time? Just as Bo Mayan was about to turn around and leave, the corner of his eye caught a red rash on her face. His eyes dimmed and he stepped forward to remove the clothes from her collar. Sure enough, the dense small rashes spread all over the body. Bo Mayan's heart sank as he bent down to pick her up horizontally and carried her straight out of the bathroom. It seems that she is allergic, and she knows she is allergic, so she doesn't want to eat that stir-dot-fried tomato and scrambled eggs, not because she is picky. Great, she lied to him again. Prepare the car and go to the hospital. Bo Mayan carried Tong Yao all the way into the car, with a terrifying expression on his face. On this journey, he drove extremely fast. It was originally a half-hour journey, but it took only ten minutes to arrive. Gu Yanli was surprised to see Tong Yao again. In just three days, this was the second time he had met her in the hospital. Fortunately, it was delivered in time, and Tong Yao was safe and sound. She left the emergency room and has now been pushed into the VIP ward for rest. 
Gu Yanli left the emergency room and walked straight towards the office. Bo Mayan sat on the sofa, reading a magazine. He had been waiting for a long time when he saw Gu Yanli pushing the door in and looking up. Lao Bo, what's wrong? Your woman doesn't know she's allergic to eggs. Gu Yanli had just left the emergency room and had not had time to take off his surgical uniform. His handsome face showed a hint of composure. As if thinking of something, he suddenly smiled and said, why was she pushed into the hospital every few days? Bo Mayan spoke calmly and leisurely, why don't you go ask her? Tisk. Gu Yanli changed into a white coat and sat down next to him, placing his hand on his shoulder. By the way, how long has it been since you've had a woman by your side? Suddenly, I publicly announced that you're serious this time. Gu Yanli was unaware that Tong Yao was the wife of Bo Mayan. Just yesterday, Bo Mayan had just made an official announcement, and the only woman around him these days was Tong Yao. He naturally linked the two things together. Bo Mayan calmly took off his hand from his shoulder and said, I'm not interested in her. Gu Yanli looked up and down disdainfully at Bo Mayan, expressing great dissatisfaction with his answer but didn't say anything. Let her stay in the hospital for the next two days. She has been very weak lately and needs to take good care of herself. Bo Mayan closed the magazine in his hand and placed it on Gu Yanli's lap. Did she wake up? Wake up, lying down in the ward. As soon as the words fell, Bo Mayan stood up and walked towards the door. Gu Yanli. Dot. This is called disinterest. It's really a dead duck with a hard mouth when Bo Mayan pushed the door into the ward, he saw Tong Yao looking at the hanging bottle next to him, not noticing anyone entering. He slowly approached and looked down at the little person in the hospital bed. Gu Yanli is right. Her body is indeed very weak now, and her face is pale with no trace of blood. However, she is not worthy of heartache. Tong Yao, this is the end of you deceiving me, Bo Mayan gently caressed his beautiful face. Don't lie to me in the future, okay? The tail note of Bo Mayan rises, and the deep tone with a slight nasal sound is very pleasant to the ear, which gives Tong Yao the illusion of being very gentle. In fact, Tong Yao is well aware that his current good mood is entirely due to her lying in the hospital bed. She has experienced how abnormal he is. She is not in the mood to communicate with Bo Mayan now, so she just closes her eyes and pretends to sleep. Bo Mayan seemed to have something else to say when his phone suddenly rang. He glanced lightly at the little person on the hospital bed and then left on the phone. After Bo Mayan left, Tong Yao opened her eyes and looked in the direction of the door. There is no one left. She can't run now, and Bo Mayan got it right before letting the bodyguards take care of her. It's okay, no one is watching her. Isn't she doing whatever she wants? So she went to the first floor supermarket to buy some snacks, then ran back to the hospital room, turned on the TV, and happily watched the variety show. Allergic reactions come and go quickly. She has basically no symptoms now, but her body lacks strength. However, this flaw does not prevent her from watching variety shows. It's been a long time since she watched TV. For the past three years, she has been under house arrest in a hotel to make amends. How could she have the opportunity to watch TV? She looked at the promotional video of the hotel in the lobby on the first floor, which was quite similar. Tong Yao briefly browsed through the variety show list. Although today's variety shows are vastly different from those three years ago, upon closer examination, overall, they are still the same as before. She randomly picked a slow variety and watched it with great interest. Although she has not yet separated from Bo Mayan, she is content to have the opportunity to secretly enjoy life. Bo Mayan is unlikely to come back either. Judging from what she just saw, that phone call should be dealing with an urgent matter. She can relax and look at it now. Tong Yao endured a rare night, watching until two o'clock in the latter half of the night before turning off the TV and falling asleep. The next noon, Bo Mayan rushed to the hospital from the company and opened the door of the ward. 
he saw Tong Yao sleeping soundly in bed, with the hanging bottle in his hand unfinished. Bo Mayan placed the lunchbox in his hand aside and carefully observed her sleeping face. The noon sunlight shone through the window of the hospital and onto her fair face, making her facial features more three-dimensional. She had a pair of curly and dense eyelashes, and a straight and small nose. She slept soundly. Bo Mayan's gaze gradually became dim and unclear, and he reached out to pinch Tong Yao's arm, gradually tightening his grip. Tong Yao is having a nightmare. She dreamed that her mother could never wake up again, and her father was also killed by the Bo family. When she was penniless, she met a group of extremely vicious villains. Please let me go. She begged the other person desperately while retreating helplessly, leaving behind a vast abyss. The other party's smile was eerie and terrifying, forcing her step by step. At this moment, a child ran out of nowhere and stood in front of her, spreading her hands to block her. Seeing this, Tong Yao quickly protected the child by her side. At that moment, the leading villain suddenly pushed and both of them fell off the cliff. Don't. Ah. Tong Yao suddenly opened her eyes, her chest heaving violently, and her glass eyes gradually focused on Bo Mayan's dark and deep eyes. Wake up. Seeing Tong Yao wake up, Bo Mayan withdrew his hand, his eyes as indifferent as ever, his head slightly tilted, indicating that she was looking at the nearby lunchbox. Eat it. I. She had just had a nightmare and hasn't recovered yet. She raised her hand to wipe away the mist on her face. Tong Yao looked up at the cabinet next to her, where there was an insulated lunchbox. Tong Yao now expresses great fear towards him delivering food. After hesitating for a while, I reached for the lunchbox and opened it. The aroma was overwhelming. Inside was a bowl of hot wonton. What kind of filling is this? She shouldn't have eggs, she's already in the hospital due to an egg allergy. Bo Mayan shouldn't be so abnormal, don't eat, do you still want me to find someone to feed you? Bo Mayan knew what she was worried about and sat elegantly on the sofa beside her. The cold and mocking light laughter made Tong Yao tremble. Tong Yao. I eat, I eat. That said, Tong Yao began to inspect wonton, from soup to stuffing. The man on the sofa's face became increasingly gloomy. He specially told the housekeeper not to put even the shredded eggs in wonton soup, but now she doesn't believe him, and the hot soup is almost cold. Finally, the little man on the hospital bed began to eat with confidence and boldness, and his expression softened slightly. End of this chapter Chapter 9 Bo's Old House You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Bo's Old House Once a person has a full meal, it is easy to fall asleep. Tong Yao rubbed her already full belly, she had just finished drinking the soup without leaving a drop. When I was eating, I didn't feel much, but now I can clearly feel that I'm eating too much. She looked up at someone who was working not far away and let out a soft sigh in her heart. Now all the blood in the body has gone to the stomach to digest food, and the blood supply to the brain is severely insufficient. She wants to sleep. With this in mind, my body has already taken action, so I will take a brief squint. Upon completion, Bo Mayan turned his head and found Tong Yao curled up on the hospital bed, already asleep. Tong Yao, who allowed you to sleep? Tong Yao was awakened as soon as she fell asleep, and she wasn't quite awake yet. I'm not sleeping. I just closed my eyes, she said Bo Mayan said. Don't sleep, it's disturbing my office. After putting on the hanging bottle, come back to my old house with me tonight. Ah. There was too much information, and Tong Yao felt a bit confused for a moment. Did sleeping disturb him? Can you say she snores while sleeping, but why didn't she notice it before? Wait, go back to the old house. When she wanted to ask for more details, the latter was already working diligently. Based on the principle of not disturbing, Tong Yao remained silent and patiently waited on the side. The hanging bottle was quickly filled out, and after completing the discharge procedures, 
Tong Yao followed Bo Mayan into the car. She looked at the scene speeding past outside the window, her heart filled with complexity. She didn't expect that this marriage would also have to see her parents. As a result, Bentley Moshang stopped in front of a high dot end custom clothing store. Get off the car and go buy clothes. Bo Mayan spoke coldly, his long legs had already stepped out of the car, and Tong Yao did not stop. He walked quickly beside him. I'm going to the Bo family's old house tonight, and the old man wants to see you. How will he behave later? You don't need me to teach you. Bo Mayan turned his head to look over, his long eyes cold and calm. Tong Yao nodded obediently. The two stood in front of the clothing store. This is a clothing store that only receives VIP customers. Bo Mayan is a regular here, and as soon as the saleswomen saw his car parked at the door, they all came forward to receive him. He directly pushed Tong Yao to the shop assistants and said, Also, give her some makeup. Bo Mayan sat in a nearby seat waiting, watching Tong Yao try on her clothes back and forth. Rather than saying that the salespeople are good at picking, it's better to say that Tong Yao is a clothes rack. She has tried on several clothes in a row, and each one looks very attractive. Finally, the salesperson picked out a fishtail skirt that wrapped around the buttocks for Tong Yao. The slim waist design complements the slim waist, making it look generous and appropriate when worn, the top is a well-dot designed shirt, with the collarbone faintly visible and the white and tender neck also visible. Tong Yao's figure is quite good. Although she is thin, she is not dry and thin. Her body has a well-proportioned distribution of flesh, and there is not a lack of room for improvement. This outfit perfectly showcases Tong Yao's figure. She was also very satisfied with her outfit and walked up to Bo Mayan to ask for his opinion. Bo Mayan's eyes darkened, and he looked at the figure in front of him that was clearly visible. He coldly said, change it. Tong Yao, including the saleswomen, was taken aback. This set of clothes best showcased Tong Yao's femininity, it was clearly very beautiful. The shop assistant had to take Tong Yao down again, and upon hearing Bo Mayan speak coldly, changed to a plain outfit. She's going to see her elders, not a blind date. A few people left, and Bo Mayan fell into contemplation. In the past three years, he has been used to seeing Tong Yao wearing cleaning clothes. Today, she suddenly changed clothes, and she is so beautiful that people cannot move their eyes away. He remembered the day when they first met again. She was wearing a blue princess dress and stood on the stairs of the villa, gently bowing to him with the hem of her skirt. At that time, she was sixteen years old, a hot and blazing age. Bo Mayan raised his hand and rubbed his eyebrows. Recently, he has been having a lot of annoying thoughts, and he feels a bit breathless. So he stood up, walked outside the door, lowered his head, and lit a cigarette. Tong Yao tried on a piece of clothing and came out, only to find that Bo Mayan was not in the store, so she walked towards the door. When she saw Bo Mayan, he was leaning against his Bentley Musang. Under the sunset, the afterglow of the setting sun gilded his side with a layer of gold. He tilted his head slightly, and from her perspective, he could just see his perfect profile. The golden light just neutralized his sharpness. Not to mention anything else, Bo Mayan does have the capital to confuse girls. However, they are not people from the same world. As if sensing his gaze, Bo Mayan also looked towards this side. Tong Yao quickly regained her senses and her eyes returned to their previous clarity. She put on a graceful smile and walked forward. That's it. Bo Mayan scanned up and down, calmly taking out a card from his bag and handing it over. Brush this. Tong Yao took it and left with the salesperson behind. Finally, the salesperson chose a warm and elegant dress, which did not have any unique designs but was very suitable for the temperament of Tong Yao, paired with just the right amount of light makeup. Tong Yao seemed like a different person, and the staff were all praising her. Coming out of the store, the sunset had completely set. At dusk, the lights are on, and the warm summer breeze blows through the car window, 
fluttering Tong Yao's soft black hair in the dimness. The hair gently caressed Bo Mayan's face, and he quietly closed the window. Tong Yao, who had no wind to blow, began to look bored at the scenery outside the window. Think about what kind of attitude you will take to meet your elders in the future. Just thinking about it, the car has entered rows of villa areas. The people living here, with a solemn and historical style, are relatively ancient and high dot ranking nobles in the city of Hong Kong. The black Bentley Musang drove into a European style villa, with several luxury cars parked in the spacious courtyard. Several uniformed guests were already waiting at the door, and the car had just come to a steady stop when the door had already been pulled open from outside. Young master, madam. The welcoming guest respectfully opened the car door and waited on the side. Bo Mayan stood there, waiting for Tong Yao to come and extend his hand to her. Tong Yao quickly realized and boldly moved forward, taking the opportunity to grab his arm. The two of them entered the hall together like this. Although the Bo family's old house has been around for some time, it is decorated in a grand manner, with complex lighting that exudes elegance and luxury. The high walls on all four sides cast shadows on the classical style carpet, and at the end of the line of sight, an old man sits upright. Mr. Bo is in his seventies, with white hair and a youthful appearance, and a vigorous spirit, exuding a refined and refined demeanor. Seeing Mr. Bo, Tong Yao finally knew where Bo Mayan's imperial demeanor came from. As the two of them walked in hand in hand, the old man's tense face finally relaxed and he let out a snort. Mu Yen, I thought you had forgotten about me as an old man. If it weren't for hearing Ji Yun say you're married, I'm afraid I might still be in the dark now. Grandpa, I'm also preparing to bring Tong Yao to see you in the next few days. As Bo Mayan spoke, he hugged the slender waist of Tong Yao beside him and occasionally lowered his gaze to look at the person in his arms, appearing extremely cherished. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Want a child? You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 10 Want a Child? Tong Yao was tense all over, and for a moment she found it difficult to adapt to such a thin Mu Yen. Upon hearing these words, Mr. Bo's tense face softened before turning his gaze to Tong Yao on the side and waving. Bo Mayan tenderly embraced Tong Yao and walked forward. Mr. Bo silently looked at Tong Yao's hand at her waist, his gaze calm, and he spoke calmly when the two of them sat down beside him. Mu Yana, your grandmother and her friends are in the backyard garden. Go and take a look at them. Bo Mayan looked thoughtfully at Tong Yao beside him, then stood up and walked away with long legs. There are only two people left in the hall. The old man looked kindly at Tong Yao, but she could clearly feel the pressure emanating from the old man beside her. This kind of pressure made Tong Yao feel suffocated. Tong Yao is not sure if the old man knows her true identity. Although there were indeed hidden circumstances in the case of Bo Fu back then, according to the current situation, until evidence is found, everyone still believes that Tong Fu was the murderer who caused Bo Fu's death. If it were known that Bo Mayan had married his enemy's daughter, I wonder how this old man would feel. Tong Yao the old man beside him pronounced out her name, Are you Tong Shuyang's daughter? Tong Yao showed a surprised expression and quickly figured out the purpose behind Mr. Bo's call for the two of them. Mr. Bo sat upright and picked up the fragrant tea on the side, sniffing it lightly at the tip of his nose. I respect Mu Yan's choice, after all, it's a matter of the previous generation, especially since you two are in love. Grandpa is not someone who is unreasonable, but. Grandpa has requirements. Tong Yao felt indescribable bitterness in her heart. What makes two lovers mutually happy is clearly that they dislike each other when they see each other. However, Tong Yao's face remained unchanged, and she sat respectfully on the side, waiting for his next words. As long as you and Mu Yan have a child, I can ignore past events and I won't interfere in your and Mu Yan's affairs. Just as Mr. Bo finished speaking, Laughter came from the door. Following the sound, Bo Mayan and another mature and charming woman walked towards an old man from afar, helping Grandma Bo onto the sofa next to him. 
Later, Bo Mayan sat back next to Tong Yao and naturally hugged her. The other woman sat beside Grandma Bo thoughtfully, her eyes fixed on Tong Yao and Mr. Bo. I'm really old. After blowing in the garden for a long time, my legs are not working well. As soon as Grandma Bo sat down, the servant on one side approached and gently pinched her legs. Grandma Bo then noticed Tong Yao sitting on the sofa next to her. The woman's demeanor is dignified and elegant, which is loved by her elders. Especially when she saw Bo Mayan and Tong Yao being intimate, it made Grandma Bo smile uncontrollably and praise her incessantly. Yao Yao, how did you get to know Mu Yen? The woman who had not spoken on the side suddenly opened her mouth. Although her face was smiling, her smile did not answer her eyes. Tong Yao, who had been named, looked at Bo Mayan with some confusion for a moment. I met by chance. Bo Mayan casually passed by and grabbed Tong Yao's shoulder. Aunt Ji, I didn't expect you to be quite interested in our relationship. Ji Yunshan chuckled and changed the topic, the servant has prepared all the dishes. It's time to cool down later. Let's go eat first. Everyone sat in front of the western-style long dining table. Mr. Bo sat in the main seat, Grandma Bo sat in the first position on the side, Ji Yun sat next to Grandma Bo, and Bo Mayan sat in the first position on the other side. Tong Yao naturally sat next to him. The table is full of vegetables, and a cup of Buddha jumps over the wall is placed in front of everyone. There are also king crabs and Boston lobsters on the table seeing all the seafood, Tong Yao breathed a sigh of relief. There were no eggs, so she could confidently eat this meal with confidence. During the meal, Tong Yao deliberately served Bo Mayan vegetables with a hint of shyness in her tone. Husband, try this crab meat, it's very tender. Bo Mayan's eyelids twitched and he looked meaningfully at the woman beside him. The latter was slowly eating Buddha jumps over the wall and refused to look at him. Watching the interaction between the two, Ji Yun's face on the side was not so good either. At that time, she heard that Bo Mayan was officially announced, so she hired a private detective to investigate what Mrs. Bo's background was. I thought it could be the daughter of someone in Hong Kong, but it surprised her when it came out. Mrs. Bo is actually Tong Yao, the daughter of the enemy of the Bo family. After much contemplation, I finally told Mr. Bo about this matter. The old man immediately ordered the two of them to come over. She had thought that Mr. Bo would be angry about this matter, but unexpectedly, both of these old men seemed very satisfied with Tong Yao. She thought she could watch a play today. Ji Yun was unwilling and fanned the flames on the side. Mu Yen, there are so many daughters in Hong Kong, like the Jiang Ryan who surrounds you every day. Aunt Ji, I think Uncle Tang from Hong Kong is also quite good. If you're interested, I can tell his son. Upon hearing this conversation, Tong Yao, who was eating, choked and lifted her eyes to quietly look at her grandparents beside her. They were enjoying their meal elegantly, while Tong Yao sighed at the elegance engraved in the DNA of the Bo family. Sometimes, even the older ones didn't seem as bad. At least I can't hear such a hilarious chat conversation. So Tong Yao pretended not to hear and silently nibbled on the imperial crab in the bowl. After dinner, Bo Mayan bid farewell to Tong Yao's grandparents and left the old house of the Bo family. Bentley Muzang slowly drove out of the old house. On both sides of the street are two rows of neat French wudong trees. The darkness is low. The searchlights at the front of the car and the street lights at the side of the street pull out a strip of light. The light is clearly out, and the atmosphere inside the car is quiet for a while. Bo Mayan lowered his head and lit a cigarette, with a silver wristwatch at the cuffs of his black shirt and a hint of crimson flickering on his fingertips. After a long time, he spoke softly, What did Grandpa say to you? Actually, Tong Yao has been thinking about this matter since she first left. Grandpa wanted a child between them, but it was obvious that neither she nor Bo Mayan wanted it. She hesitated a bit and didn't know how to say it. Moreover, if you don't know which sentence she said, 
you may step on Bo Mayan's thunder point. Bo Mayan saw Tong Yao's hesitation and slowly took out a puff of smoke, then turned his head to look at Tong Yao. What, you're mute. Tong Yao took a deep breath. Grandpa wants us to have a child. Bo Mayan's eyebrows moved and he stared at Tong Yao. She has a delicate face like a disaster, but no smile. Her eyes are as peaceful as a deep pool. For some reason, the woman in my mind that night overlapped with the person in front of me. Bo Mayan felt momentarily dazed until he was burned by the cigarette but in his hand, and he impatiently threw it away. He won't have children with her, there's only one person who can give birth to him. The woman of that night needs to be found as soon as possible. Tong Yao is a naturally charming bone, and she will eventually have an accident by her side. End of this chapter